Kagoshima is located on the south side of Kyushu. This welcoming city embraces a chilled and slow-paced environment. Not only is it close to the sea, but it's also a ferry ride away from Sakurajima, an active volcano. I made a video of my day there. I will leave a link in the description box. Kagoshima offers a cute travel pass that gives you unlimited access to trams, buses and ferries. We bought a three-day pass from the tourist center near Tenmonkan. Taking the tram is a very convenient way to do some sightseeing. This place has its very own tram network, it's the main mode of transport around here. Sakurajima is an iconic landmark, it's an active volcano that puffs up smoke every single day. You can get there by ferry, it only takes 15 minutes. Hello, today we are at Shirayama. Mount Shiroyama is another great spot to enjoy the charming views of Kagoshima. It stands at a height of 107 meters with its own park, observatory, and an upscale hotel. The Shirayama Hotel is a very well-equipped establishment with over 10 restaurants specializing in Japanese, Chinese, and Western cuisines. This hotel even has its own indoor and outdoor hot springs, separate for females and males. You can take a rejuvenating dip in the onsen and admire the breathtaking views of Sakurajima and Kagoshima. There's a Satsuma Kiriko shop here. It's a traditional Japanese craft from Kagoshima during the 19th century, back when samurais were still around. This special cut glass technique was lost around the end of the Edo period, but a group of artisans brought it back to life in 1985. Senganen was built in 1658 and it was home to the Shinmatsu clan. Unfortunately, it was closed by the time I got there. But I got to visit the gift shop and the cute dollhouse-like Starbucks. I've been on quite a few ferris wheels in Japan, so why not add Kagoshima's Amuran to the list? It's a ferris wheel that sits on top of Amu Plaza. Admission is 500 yen for adults and 300 for children. When I went, there were Pokemon themed gondolas. Each had a Pokemon inside. It's a shame the windows are quite scratched, making everything look a bit foggy. But Kagoshima still looks lovely at night, and the ride is a nice and relaxing way to end the day. So right now we're waiting for our train to go to Ibuzuki. It should take roughly around an hour. I wanted to get the Tamate Bako train, but it was booked out. The exterior is black and white, whilst the interior is designed with swivel seats next to the windows. You need to book it at least a month in advance. It's very popular. Ibuzuki is well known for its natural sand baths that are heated by hot springs on the beach. The steam sand baths are known to have many health benefits. Since it's on the beach, it's literally a sauna with a view. So we made it to Ibuzuki! So now we're going to try and find our way to the sand bath. Oh, there's a sign right here. Shows us where to go. I hope we're in the right place though. It's super quiet. 
We're heading to the Saraku Sandbath Hall. It's a 20 minute walk from the station. And we're here. Entry costs 1,100 yen for adults and 600 yen for children. The fee includes a yukata, the bathrobe kimono. You can rent a towel for an extra 200 yen. You can also borrow a parasol for free. Once you lie down, a member of staff will cover you up with warm sand and steam you for about 10 to 15 minutes. Afterwards, you can wash up and use the hot spring and sauna facilities. You can also grab a bottle of Ibusuki soda from the snack shop. So that was more or less what I did in Ibuzuki. No wait, Kagoshima. I'll leave you guys here at the airport's observatory deck. See you next time.